All right, guys, it's Dr. Beard joined, um, and Paul is joining me today, as he always does. I don't even know why I need to mention that. Um, we're going to talk about medical school brainwashing and why your doctor really can't help you with most things. And I know that sounds pretty, um, I don't know, uh, harsh. crude, harsh, but... Fact, my, facts, my, facts are harsh. Yes, facts. Sometimes facts can be harsh, but uh, anyway, before we get started, you know what we got to do? Let's listen to the Hellroys. I don't take nothing that a doctor don't prescribe. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't smoke no blood, man. I don't do no drugs, man. It angers up that blood, man, so I don't do no Okie doke. And we're back. And before I get started, this content is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to provide medical advice or to take the place of medical advice or treatment from a personal physician. And I'm not your personal physician. All right, Paul. So you're not happy with what you learned in med school? <laughs> um, I'd like a refund, actually. Well, it does get At your, least to cover part of it. It does get your ticket punched to allow you to be a doctor. It does. And, and I did learn a lot of valuable things in medical school. Mm -hmm. The human condition being one of those. And residency in general. Residency in general. And, and yeah, you know, how to take care of acute, um, p uh, acute issues, you know, ICU experience. Uh, ER experience, anatomy, physiology, all those great things. So, so why was it brainwashing? Um, what did they do to you? You know, I didn't realize it was brainwashing at the time, but looking back on it, I realized it was. It probably started on day one with the white coat ceremony. And um, there's a and a lot of you know if a lot if there's some physicians listening to this, this is this is my take. Okay, you you may have had different experiences in your medical school and residency training, but this is what I experienced. And I know I've talked to other people who feel the way I do as well because they came over to the the other side. Um, we're our egos, you know, are um, they love to to play with our egos, tell us how wonderful we are, how smart we are. We made it here. We're the cream of the crop. We're so smart, you know, um, and uh, you're, you're going to be this this uh, pillar of the community. And uh, that's, what they're, that's what we're pretty much told on day one, right, that we are the you-know-what. So you were through psychological grooming. Grooming from day one, okay? And that continued throughout medical school. I mean, it's no different than any type of grooming when you want to manipulate someone. Right. And, you know, as a 30-year-old, you know, I was like, this is kind of a little overkill, but okay, yeah, I made it. I worked my butt off to get here. I studied hard. I made good grades. I got here. Um, but the, <laughs> if you say that to some 20-year-olds that were in the class... Just imagine what that's going to do to their brains, you know? Um, and so there was a lot of that. But then there was also, and I was sort of picking up on this, any type of natural treatment or therapy was really poo-pooed on. And it was, you know, you, you got laughed at if you brought it up. Mm -hmm. It was um, called quackery. Um, vitamins were, on one hand, completely useless, but on the other hand, caused a lot of problems. So don't, so don't. Don't prescribe them. Yet the clinical trials they provided you were all done on Centrum. Yes, and, and just low grade vitamin. And the studies were just horrible, you know. Um, so it was any type of natural approach was considered quackery. And um, if your patients brought that up or questioned what you were doing, they were to be um, uh, chastised, admonished. Yes, looked down upon, laughed at. Um, and any time you question anything, you were that's what they did to you. Exactly. So um, you you've learned, you learned, basically again it was grooming. They we were teaching you how to react to a legitimate question, just dismiss it. Don't 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 even acknowledge it. Just you're no you don't know what you're talking about. And not only you know whenever I would ask questions, it was met with oftentimes how dare you question me. You know, don't you dare question me. This is just the way it is. I'm teaching you. Yes, I'm teaching you. What do you know? I'm the doctor. I'm the tenured professor. I've been here for so long. You yeah, know. Yet in all that time, nothing about lifestyle. No. And that, you know, I was a dietitian prior to going to medical school. So I'd already, you know, 
knew I had already known that lifestyle played a big part. Diet was a big part, but even then I learned a bunch of crap. Um, so I'd already been through one brainwashing session and saw through that. So it was easier for me to kind of pick up on that again in medical school. And I was very disappointed because I wasn't getting the answers that I wanted. They were not answering my questions about why. Why were these people, why were these patients getting these conditions? It was always, well, here's the pill and the treatment you do in the labs that you order. Do you think that'll change at all now that... COVID is exposed that your overall health condition greatly impacts your chance of survivability. I mean, now it's no longer, it's not the disease. It's the fact that you're overweight, you're sedentary, you eat poorly, you have a higher, much higher chance of catching COVID as opposed to you almost have no chance of catching it if you're healthy. I wonder well, if that's, is that going to change? I mean, this is, this no, is smoking gun. They're just going to come up with another pharmaceutical to treat obesity. Call it the lifestyle drug or something? Yeah, probably. You know, I, I don't know. It's just... It, it's just, you, stop calling these people experts because well, yes, they're not. Well, you often say that MDs just, they don't have the cure. They've not been trained to cure you. No, they do not have the tools to get to the root cause of your problems. They were not trained that way. We were trained to memorize and learn all about how medications work in the body and how and the interactions between multiple medications that's what we were taught and the procedures that you do you know what procedures what pills what labs never about under the underlying causes with your lifestyle well they didn't, they didn't study the basis with immunology you know the, the no what, we what, no trust me we went all the immune system was discussed and taught and learned a lot Okay. But how they not they just didn't address the. But yeah, they never would um, apply it to specific conditions. It was always presented to us in a way where this is how this medication manipulates the immune system to then, you know, lower this lab marker that the, then we can say, look, we're cure, you know, we're curing your uh, or treating your immune condition. Compared, so as an engineer. We go in and basically the first two to two and a half, almost three years of our curriculum is the same amongst all engineers. There are a few classes that are different, but you're getting your, basically your toolkit, your math toolkit, your physics toolkit, your chemistry toolkit. And when you get your first job, almost never do you go into that field. They're, basically, engineering school is teaching you a way of thinking. It's presenting you with tools that they know that you can use later. Sounds like med school did, did the exact opposite. They kind of, they're not teaching you to investigate. They're not teaching you the core science. Oh, no, they're, they're... You're, you're memorizing the cause, if, what they're calling the cause or the symptom, and this is what you do. It's a memorization as opposed to understanding the, the real theory behind it. It's, it, they're very sly. They, they present the material to you in a way where you are learning the basics of, of basically, human anatomy and physiology and metabolic and metabolic activities and, and immunology and all that but again they're not teaching you how to apply it to understand why it's all about how to understand how pharmaceuticals work how they'll interact how they'll interact. yes as opposed to why the body is to me it's just, and, and it's how a, and how um, diet plays a role how stress plays a role how gut health plays a role you know, how toxin exposures. So the only thing they ever want to talk about is lead. Like that's the only toxin in our environment is lead, lead, lead. And it's, it's, um, I'm embarrassed. I really am. It's, just, it's fascinating. It's, it's such a different approach to a science. All the other science fields are more general early on where they're just teaching you the basics of, and teaching you how to think. It doesn't sound like you were no, taught how to think. No, not, I don't think so. They, they think you have a, think in terms of pharmaceutical procedure management. Which is a cost. So, is a so that's, that's their tools, all right? No mention of, or very little mention of lifestyle. It's just kind of mentioned in passing. So the entire way you were taught is basically to be a cog. In a in, wheel. In, in, in this machine mm -hmm. that. A middleman. Where we are pharmaceutical middlemen. And procedure middlemen. Yes. So you. That's what it comes down to. 
What do you need? I got, I got some good pills over here. I got some good hips and knees. What do you need? What do you need? You know, nothing about. Right. And, and again, and I've said this many times, I am not here to demean all the, the great physicians and surgeons that we have, at, have out there. There's some that are great, okay, that we need. They do really important things for us when we need them for mm-hmm. acute and dire and emergent situations. But when it comes to man, you know, chronic disease, they fail miserably. So you're just trying to basically correct the problem. That's, that's and I don't know that we'll ever correct it because, listen to this, I, I get job offers all the time. They come in the mail, they email, texting constantly. I got offered or there was a position available in Texas for a pain management position. Okay. $450,000 a year. The scope. <laughs> in the state of Texas, which would go take you very far. Yeah, okay? no, no state tax. It's awesome. And I was just like, I cannot believe, this is why, and everybody wants to say, you know, is asking, well, how can we, you know, how can we get functional medicine to be more mainstream? And this is what you're up against. Right. A lot of doctors might see the light, but they don't want to give up those salaries because they work their butts off. Yes, you've invested a lot. We have invested a lot of time. I gave up my, you know, a big chunk of my early years in school, I've spent a lot of time in school. You know, your undergrad and the dietitian, and then going back to school to take other classes, and then medical school, then residency. And you know, not only were we, we were in school all the time, but residency is just like a, some type of hazing. Ha- <laughs> yes, it is a hazing event. And so we're 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 working our tails off. We've gone through this hazing event. We're tired. We're broke. We're in debt. Heck yeah. So the best I'm going to take that $450,000 a year job. But, okay? you, but you didn't. But I, but I gave it up. I mean, Because I could not live with myself knowing what I know. But a lot of doctors don't know. They don't know the functional medicine way so yet. Folks, I have subsidized her the last <laughs> six years. Hey, uh, I was working, making pretty good money at first. At first. And when I was in the ER. And yeah. then um, I just... All right, so it's the last six years I've subsided, but gladly. We can, we can blame Dr. Betty Bashaw for that because she introduced me to functional medicine and I never went back. Yeah, and your moral compass. But no, I, I, I invested because I believe in it. It's sad that you we have to, you know, we're doing fine, but it's... it's I have a, to work other jobs. Yes, you have to work other jobs to make this job. So so back to the, the prescription funnel and what you, you're, the, the physician's a cog in the, in the wheel. I've even noticed that when we go through labs, that the labs actually, the panels that the doctors use... You can almost look at it like this is designed just to give you enough information to prescribe a pill. That's it, and that's exact, and nothing more. And nothing more. And doctors do not like investigating other things. I mean, the, the thyroid because panel, if they come back abnormal, then they've got to do something with it, and they don't know what to do with it. Well, the thyroid panels are so crazy that it only it just gives you that one snippet. Okay, we're going to put you on Synthroid. Well, and most of them will order a little bit more, but they still they're still not thinking in terms of why are your thyroid lab levels off. Right. They just know they're off, here's your pill. None of them want to consider about why your thyroid labs are off or why your thyroid antibodies are high. We don't know, but here's here's what you do. Here's the labs we check and here's the pills you take. And I know that you're still saying you don't feel good, but your labs look good, okay? So I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I've checked all my boxes. Everything looks good. You know, your labs look good. Sorry that you still feel bad. Well. I am good. Peace out. Yeah. The, and that's frustrating because we get those patients to that they they end up coming to see us and they're just so angry, frustrated, and just tired of it. And unfortunately, some of them are too far down the path. Well, they've gotten all the wheels have fallen off. Yeah, and bless their hearts. And I just, it takes a long time to put those wheels back on. Uh, yeah. It's a journey. We get calls and people, you know, I, I I field them and people say, well, you know, my. 85 year old grandfather's on 14 meds and he's getting stents and can you help? I'm like, mate, not really. I mean, it's gone so far. Yeah, sure, we can improve the quality of life, but you, you've gone so far, medicine has man- is, is, is damaged you. These two statements, I think, if you, ha- if you don't believe what we're saying, these two statements maybe will ring true. Two people will have the same symptom, but different causes. And yet those two people are, are treated the same. Yeah, same, same um, pills. So because the symptoms look alike, I'm going to treat you the same. Yeah, but, you, have, you but, have diabetes, here's your pill, metformin. Or, or the cause of that could be 
two different yes. things. And the reverse of that would be two people have the same cause, but they, but they have two different symptoms. So they're going to treat those two symptoms differently, even though they have the same cause. Yes. If you reconcile okay. those two sentences, you realize that our medicine is not going down the right path. It's not one for health. No. I think it's just to continue to have customers. It's a good cut. It, it, it certainly seems to be that way. Well, we always try. And to I don't understand why more. I, there are doctors that are waking up because they contact me. And some of, um, some of my fellow, um, some doctors that I did residency with have contacted me. And now they're on the functional medicine path, mm -hmm. which makes me very happy. Because they were just like me. They were like, Amy, what I'm doing, I'm doing what I was taught, but nobody's getting better. They're actually getting sicker. And I, I saw this functional medicine stuff, and I follow you on Facebook. And this, sound, this was what I want to do. I became a doctor to help people, not to just see them continue down this path of ill health. So they are starting to wake up, but it's, there's few numbers. I'll push back on that because I get to talk to a lot of them. And a lot of them love the idea, and they'll try to straddle the conventional medicine Which, model. Which are you talking about, patients or physicians? Physicians. Okay. Where they try to straddle the, the conventional model, but I'm going to do BHRT, or I'm going to add. And so, folks, if you if BHRT, the, the hormone replacement, we often see people get, oh, they're, they're functional medicine. They do natural this, or they do that. That is not functional medicine. That is just a natural alternative, okay? So I think a lot of these doctors that see the light or only seeing a, the light around the corner because it really is it's it's, it's they are almost completely in once you separate the acute and the chronic which right. meds you need but beyond that you cannot straddle no. conventional medicine they're, they're diametrically almost opposed to each other yeah and those patients that come to us who try to do that we don't have very good results because you know you're trying to do depression management but Right. They're still on there, those meds, and they, they try, still don't, they don't want to give up that mindset. Uh, yeah, it is, it's it, hard because a lot, and, and just because, and a lot of patients will come to us and say, Oh, yeah, I saw this functional medicine doctor, and I'm like, Okay, first of all, were they certified? Mm -hmm. Who are they? Let me do some investigation. They'll be a BH, BHRT person, like all they do is prescribe hormones, like that is going to cure you. Yes, your, your hormones are abnormal, and there's a lot of reasons why, mm -hmm. and throwing hormones at you often just makes matters worse when you're not ab addressing all the upstream issues that are contributing to your imbalanced hormones. It's, it's an appealing product because deep down... Because deep, it makes a lot of money, too. Well, it makes a lot of money, but deep down, people don't want to do it. They don't want... They don't do the hard stuff. They don't want to do the hard stuff. No, I will take a natural pill. See, I'm, I'm trying harder. Right. But I'm not going to adjust my diet. I'm not going to adjust my sleep. I'm not going to adjust I'm my exercise. Gonna, right. I'm going to constantly... I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give up my shift work job. Or just, that is just can't I'm not, not going to do that. Yeah. So I'm going to again. I'm trying to straddle. It doesn't work. And even when the patients that try to straddle that, because we have patients whose, um, you know, their their family members will be physicians, and it, those are the worst ones. It's because I'm like, oh no, this is going to be a battle. This is going to be a constant battle because I know they're going to be getting advice from the family member on what I'm wanting them to do. Mm -hmm. They're going to, you know, they just squash it at every attempt. Some of them are better than others, right. you know, but it is, it's, it's very frustrating when you have patients who family, you know, whose parents or brother or something is a physician. And it's, so we, in the previous episode, we said you have to have a PCP or it's very advantageous too, because that's the way the system that is built. You're, you're, you're going to have to use the system. Right. So you okay. have to use the system. So when do you know how to escalate, which is really tricky because neither of us escalated properly and both of us had much worse uh, health conditions and this is us who know a lot but you know and then you basically you start first because you this is how what brought you to functional medicine because conventional medicine failed you if you, if you for people who follow us who've already heard this bear with us yeah, but I know. but it's it's important because how do you escalate you know we just said oh you, they're not gonna be able to help you well when do they escalate to a functional medicine doctor when do they start take because Time heals a lot of illnesses. Yes, so texture, wanna, texture of time is, is really good for a lot of people. So I'm, I'm asking, you know, how does someone reconcile Escalate that? Escalate to what? Well, with you, with your chronic constipation and what ended up finally having to take out most of your colon, if you knew about functional medicine, what, what, when could you have escalated that to hopefully have not had to do the surgical Man, route? I, I probably would have had to go back into my 20s. It was that early? Yeah, I mean... It, 
I mean, my, my, my symptoms look at, you know, again, hindsight's twenty twenty, but I was exhibiting symptoms of immune dysfunction from a very early age mm-hmm. that was, you know, chronic strep infections, lots of antibiotics. Then it was hyperactivity. Then it was, it was IBS all as a child, chronic constipation, you know, pills. And then as a, as a teenager, it was acne, depression, anxiety, Accutane, doxycycline. It was ruining my gut health and my overall health. Then that, you know, became restless leg syndrome and, and all kinds of neuropathy and Cause most chronic of this pain. Lifestyle interventions would have solved most of this. And it, yes, I mean, because mine was a lot of I was. It was horrible gut health. Mm-hmm. Um, later discovered I had food sensitivities. Right. You know that I, I was not aware of and diet coke addiction stress over exercising um, partying in college didn't help either you know so there are yeah it was all lifestyle driven I mean, the reason i ask this because we, we've told them before you need because now i'm good right right, right. and it's all controlled by lifestyle no we were telling them they need a, a, a doctor a md a primary care physician but then we're saying they're only good for acute and they're not going to be able to help you long term. So how do we reconcile these? Because these people listening to us are looking for solutions. Well, you need to find. You, you have to have a primary care doctor in case you do have acute issues. Mm-hmm. You need imaging studies and things like that. Okay, you need to have them on in your pocket for that. But then work with a functional medicine doctor. We we have this all the time. Or at least a health coach. Because or a that, health coach. That's the yeah. answer. Is is that? And the it's one. It's like a dual system that you have to have. Well, and you also have to be. There's a lot of self assessment because as much as I knew. I wouldn't listen because I have a, a a hip that needs to be replaced. I'm we'll hopefully be able to rehab it. We'll see. Trying it's to a, avoid that. Trying to avoid that. But the orthopedic surgeon said, you know, I can schedule you next week. It's your your hip is just gone. That was six months ago. That yeah. The I I look at back, you know, how it trans, transpired. At first, I thought I was just it wasn't as flexible. Then because of the transference for Pam, I really wasn't sure it was my hip. All along. My doctor wife is telling me, Paul, you know, the drinking. I'm like, it's not it. It's not it. Because I didn't want to give up drinking. So the, the only way to do self-assessment is once you're doing everything right. And I, I was, as much as I knew, it was like, no, no, I'm going to straddle. And I'm not saying we have to be perfect, folks. But if you're having an ailment and it's not getting better with the tincture of time, you need to start looking at some hard. Because this stuff went on for a couple of years. And don't, and don't, like, don't wait until all the wheels fall off to then start working with a functional medicine doctor and expect them to miraculously cure you in two weeks, Mm -hmm. okay? That is so unfair. And we've had people treat us like that who have been caught up in the conventional medicine system, have been on multiple, you know, all kinds of pills, have had all kinds of procedures, gallbladders removed, stomachs removed. I mean, it's just, and then when, and then you expect me to perform some type, I'm not a miracle worker, all right? And I can't just, put you all back together in two weeks and may never really be able to, you, you know, for some people. That's why I think. And, and, then, and then they'll go say, well, functional medicine doesn't work. Yes, didn't you know, it? yeah, because well, conventional medicine did such a great job. Yes, exactly. I mean, I get that all the time. It's going to be one or two visits. I was like, oh God. Yeah. They want, they think we're going to fix them in one or two visits. And this is the mindset. That is a terrible mindset. Healing takes more time than that. It's not a quick, there's no quick fixes. The cheapest way of getting into this is, is working with the health coach. Absolutely. And they can do so much, especially a good a one that's trained in functional medicine. Oh, yeah. There's right. lots of people out there calling themselves health coaches, and they're just really health enthusiasts. Right. With a lot of misinformation. With a lot of, yeah, a lot of misinformation. Because ours are mentored by you. They're all certified functional medicine. There's we, We've chosen the cream of the crop. But if I could have worked with one of them, they would have pointed out, you're not doing everything wrong, right. Because that's really what it comes down to. The, the doctor's not going to do this for you. You have to do it as a self-assessment. I'm having a chronic condition. I've given it the tincture of time. That didn't help. Am I doing everything right? And if I was honest with myself, I would have said, no, I'm drinking way too much. Could that be contributing it? And you would have said, well, yes, because absolutely, boom, boom, boom. You could have walked yes. me through it. But I wasn't there mentally. And so, folks, that, that's really what this purpose of this is, is that you cannot trust on your doctor to fix you. They're not. They're not trained to fix you. No, they're not trained to fix you, and they can't go home with you to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. It's on you. Self-care is the new health care. Yes. I don't think I mentioned that during the beginning. Well, we did now. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's so rudimentary. It's so basic that people don't want to believe it's the truth. 
but it, imp- it is everything for your health. But it goes against what, I mean, there's been a lot of brainwashing that's occurred in the patient population with health care. You know, it's that quick fix. Come in, 15-minute visit, here's your pill, It'll get rid of that symptom, right? And it's just everything is so fast, fast, got to do it now, got to have it now. Everything has to be cured with a pill. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's this whole mentality that's developed, and it's it's tough. That's why working with a health coach um, that'll identify, it's like, okay, I'm certifying you that you're doing everything right. I think we need to escalate it to, an, you know, to a functional medicine MD. Because short of that, the MD is going to like, ah, you're not doing the lifestyle. You need to go back and do that. Yeah, I, I don't want to see you if you're, you're not doing the lifestyle stuff right. Right. You're just wasting my time. You could have done so many labs in me. And it, it all, it just, yes, it got all these labs. This is great information. But, Paul, you're drinking too much. And then people get mad when they see me. They're like, we told you to see the health coach. And mm-hmm. they, they're like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to see Dr. Beard. And then I tell them, well, here's what I want you to do. And it's all um, clean up your diet, elimination, reintroduction diet, stop Stop with the Diet Coke, stop smoking, you got to start exercising, uh, get off, you know, start getting sleep. And they're like, that's, that's it. That's what you want me to do. And they, they're, just, they're like upset Well, because it's, it's because they didn't, that's all. But until we clear that smoke out of the room. And I'm like, what did you, ex- I told you to see the health coach. Yeah. Cause it, cause until that really the, the, the waters are muddied, you cannot see much because there's so many different possibilities. If they're doing these things wrong, it's like, well, it could be this, 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 or this, but I'm not going to know until you. Clean up your diet. Clean up your gut. And let's see what happens, because usually that takes care of a lot of the issues. Mm-hmm. And uh, even with the people, I don't know why people don't want to believe that. And I still have friends and family who just—it's like talking to a brick wall. Or they'll come in, they'll say, "I'm, I, I'm, I'm eating clean. I'm doing this, and we'll investigate." It's like, no, you're not. Oh my, yeah. And then the exercise, they're either doing not nearly enough or doing way too much. Right. So I mean, there's just so many. So many things that have to be considered. And objectively looked at. And that's yeah. what the health coach is. They're, they are you without arguing. They're, they're, they, they can learn about you and they can look and say, here's what's going on objectively. And it, it's almost like, because my dad just popped in my head because he, I changed him to um, a more natural thyroid treatment. And he's like, Amy, that, that stuff's just not working. And I go home and I look in their cabinets and I am appalled at the crap I see in the cabinets. Mm -hmm. And my dad is just, he's constantly, he just, he's got a Diet Coke in the refrigerator and I, and I point it out and he's like, I only have one of those a week and, or, and I'm looking at the cereals or just junk, you know, just there's snacks everywhere, sugar, processed stuff. This is a man that had a quadruple bypass. Yes. But you know, he, and he, my dad's pretty remarkable for his age. He's still very active. And I, and I want to tell him, Dad, man, you could feel so much better. And, and I hear his complaints, but he doesn't sleep well and blah, blah, blah. And he's tired. And, and he, for some reason, he just will not change that lifestyle. He does everything else really well except mm-hmm. his diet. Right. His diet is really is causing all of his problems. Right. But he just cannot go there. And there's probably some reasons for that. You know, he, 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 he grew up really poor and there were days and hungry and, and there were days where he did not eat at so, all. So he's nothing. not, he's not going to go so, back there. And he does not want to revisit those days. And I, and I get that, you know, and that, that's something a health coach could help him with, you know, because yeah. that's kind of work through. Cause that's the pushback we get is like, I can't, sorry, afford, dad. I had to <laughs> out you had to out you on that one. Cause that's the pushback we get in addition to I'm doing everything right, but still fix me. They're not looking at themselves objectively. Then they say they can't afford it. And, yeah. and folks, our, our, our practice is probably one third of the cost of any other one in the country with even remotely close qualifications. We've, we've designed this for the flyover I'm country. surprised there's some functional medicine doctors that haven't called me and like, what are you trying to do to us? You know? It's just we're, we're trying to reach it to the masses because this is mainstream medicine. It's what it needs to be. But we can't get to mainstream medicine because of what we're exposing. Even the med school curriculum is designed by the pharmaceutical industry. They have a huge input in it. Well, if, if you're only studying pharmaceuticals. And they like to hide it, you know, but come on. We know what's up. I mean, you don't have to hide it when, like, again, since the, the COVID's in the news right now, this the HCQ, the, right. what they're doing that, you know. Uh, it's, I cannot stand it, what they're doing. And we're not saying if it's right or wrong. It's the, no, fact that, it's the fact they're not studying it. There's been a lot of studies that look good. And all of a sudden, France says, we're not doing it over safety concerns. And then the WHO or CDC drops their study over safety concerns. Yet this is a pill they'll prescribe for 
anything other than COVID to a breastfeeding I know. woman. We won't, we won't, we don't prescribe supplements to people who are breastfeeding and yet HCQ is so safe. And yet why is it being squashed? Cause it's 10 cents a dose. Yeah. That's, it's, uh, that's one thing that's really upsetting to me during all of this mess is I mean, that we have treat, we have cheap treatments that we know work. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have, I've, I have talked to lots of doctors, says it works. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and then there's people that are absolutely refusing to allow it being used. Yeah. So you have a, a dollar a pill or a thousand dollars a pill. The dollar pill has been prescribed millions and millions and millions of times for other conditions and it's been safe. This new thousand dollar pill, which folks you need them, was it five or 10 of them you need? It's expensive. They're right. about 5,000 mm -hmm. to $10,000 for the treatment. It's only been done on a few people, but that's where they're going. It you can't make no this sense. stuff up. You know, it does make sense. This is a no, profit. Course, it's a, yeah, it's a profit industry. And so this is, we're given the, the but, and, 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 and the HCQ has side effects. Okay. Let's not, everything has side effects. That's not, I mean, and, I'm and, not saying it's just completely safe. There's nothing that's completely safe out there. And we're not, we're, I'm not advocating. I'm just saying it's the fact that they're squashing studies so early on and, and, and saying, Oh, safety concerns. Bull, bull. There's yeah, no way. I know. Anyway, we, let's just, let's well, well what I'm getting into is how do we change things? Cause we said you need a doctor that can't help you. You need functional medicine, can't afford it. So functional medicine needs to be mainstream, but how does that occur when, when, when schools are, um, when, when the schools is being dictated by the med? I don't know. They're, they're, they're so intertwined. I don't know how you, I don't know if the whole thing needs to be dismantled. I, I don't know because <laughs> this, the system is one to keep, you know, to have customers. Yeah, it is. Remember, and so this, this goes back to Rockefeller and his design of this. When he, he this is the person who said competition is a sin. What he meant by that, he goes, I don't want competition. I want to get rid of everything and just have my own playing right. field. And then squash it. You know, you know, anytime no matter what, yeah, anytime. It crops up. And use use the media. Use because you when you look at the media right now, they already it, do that to functional medicine doctors on social media. Oh yeah. They, we get called quacks and, and they'll immediately go to our websites and point out the fact that we sell supplements to try to discredit us. Right. They, that is the, their tactic every single time. Yeah. The media's lockstep with whatever pharmacy wants to say, big pharma wants to say, I wonder why a third to a half of the commercials on TV last night. Remember we were watching and it was just nothing but pharmaceutical. That's all it is. Ads. So they will do anything that big pharma says. And so well, yeah, because that's where all their advertising dollars are exactly. coming from. So I want you to squash this again, extremely dangerous. They shouldn't be advertising. If the doctors are being informed, there's no reason to inform the public on with a, a guy skipping rope and doing some jerk commercial. Oh, that's what I need now. There's actually no information. It's all just feel good. Oh, I know. Everybody's happy and feeling great and dancing in the yard or whatever. So we, we mentioned earlier that MDs are really good at acute, mm -hmm. but are they? Cause doesn't, don't, don't a lot of these acute conditions become chronic because of the way they treat yes, them? Yes. Cause a lot of people are like, do I need, do I need to go see my doctor for this issue? And I'm like, Oh man, they're just going to make matters worse. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what happens. You go to the doctor for a, a sprain. Okay. Next thing you know, you're, you're, you're having rashes and joint pain because you're t they put you on NSAIDs. Mm -hmm. And now you've got, now you're getting treated for rashes with steroid creams. Because they ruined your gut with the NSAIDs. Yes. And then, and then, or you go to the, you know, you have a, you have a, a, quote, a sinus infection that usually resolves on its own. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they're always going to prescribe you antibiotics for it. And that's just going to ruin your gut health. And then you're just going to get more sinus infections and other things. Okay, so they just make matters worse often. They turn an acute issue into a chronic issue. How many times have we, have we heard this with like the, the opioids? You right. know, they, they injured themselves and then boom, they're an opioid addict. Who is also constipated, who has also got, which are the cause other toxicity issues because of that, yeah, which causes yes. more inform yeah. information. They're making them depressed and all kinds of things. Now they're on antidepressants and it's just like one issue leads to another. So it's, it's hard for me because, again, people will say, do I need to go to the doctor? I'm like, oh, man, uh, yeah, but 
they're just going to make matters worse. I know where this is going to go. I know what they're going to prescribe. I know what their MO is. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be dealing with this, and then you're going to be dealing with this. And sure enough. This is why self-care is so important, because you have to be your own advocate, because the doctors are not equipped to handle it. No. The system is is really gamed. I mean, people are like, well, well, I wish functional medicine would take insurance. It's like, why do you say that? Why don't you say, I wish my insurance would allow me to allocate my dollars where I want them? Yes. It's, it, you're, you're, They're making you're, us be the bad guys. When you go back... We can't participate in insurance, people. It, it, we can't keep the doors open. You go back 80 years, the only people being paid were people who saw the patient. The doctor, the nurse, the intern, the orderly. The people who actually touched that patient were the only people that got paid. I bet you it's not a... Th- of, the, of a dollar that's spent on health care right now, I would... I need to verify this. I've looked it up before. But we're looking at less than a third goes towards the, the people who see the patient. There's 60, 70% of this is being eaten yes. up by admin. Admin for it to administer and collect for, for insurance. For insurance. But this is also in the hospital setting. Mm-hmm. You have CEOs that are making a uh, million dollars. Nah, you know. that's, that's little, maybe huge systems, but you know your, your smaller systems... They, they make good money. Yes, but then there's the VPs below that, and then there's these all, all these layers of, of admin. And then on the insurance side, there's all these li- layers of admin. So you're, it's set up. It's going to be very difficult to change this, folks. And this is why we came up with this podcast, Self-Care is the, healthcare, is the New Healthcare, is because you have to be your own advocate. And if we keep on hammering this home, if you're doing the lifestyle and you'll eliminate all the possible causes then whatever's left will be a lot easier to see. Yeah. There's the Sherlock Holmes quote, I wish I would have written it down, about when you eliminate all the, possib- the possibilities, no matter how you know, remote they might be, whatever's left is, no matter, the, answer? is the answer. Because that's all that's left. And that's almost what functional medicine is. You've got to start with we, all the easy stuff and get rid of it. And, and we then- investigate, I mean, you talk about an investigation. It, you, first of all, you're going to complete our forms, which are going to take at least an hour or more, depending oh. on how complex your issues are and everything and how much medical history you have. And then you're going to spend another hour getting asked more and more questions mm-hmm. by our, our health coach. And you're, you're going to be asked things that you have never been asked before, I can promise you, and things that you have never even thought that might be contributing to your issues. But as you start peeling back these layers, and, the, and most of these things well, it are, takes time because okay. we have to learn you. But this is this is done this is done the health coach level, which is very inexpensive. You're talking about less than a massage therapist. You're talking about you know less than your gym membership. Right. And we can accomplish really great things. But once you clear the smoke out of the room and you're doing everything you can on your own, then it becomes very inexpensive. Mm-hmm. And by by the way, the, the savings you'll have in the conventional medicine model. Yeah, you you won't have to be copays and this and all the copays and hanging out in the that awful waiting room, you know and and drive into the pharmacy to pick up your prescriptions and who knows how much it might be, you know, and, and, and all these different procedures that they're going to want you to have and imaging studies and things like that. So, yeah, eventually it's going to save you a lot of money. It's an investment. It's an investment in your health, and that's a good investment to make. It's your health. So, Without your health, you don't have much. So the doctor can't help you. It really comes down to you. And that's, that's the bitter truth we're trying to expose, that they've not been trained to help you the way you need to be helped. Right. They're never going to address the root cause of your issues, ever. I mean, and, and folks, this is up to the, the best and the brightest. We've had cardiologists tell us that... it's sad because you have these smart people right. who have learned crap. I'm talking about chief of cardiology saying that nutrition means nothing. It's all about exercise, yet he's over-exercising and causing other inflammation and stress levels. It's like, how do you... How can someone who's so brilliant be so stupid? Yeah, and it, this is a very intelligent... Dwarfs, I mean, like his beautiful brain, mm-hmm. but can't, it just can't you know, see the forest of the trees. Well, because there's a lot of money involved, right? I'm, and he's and, become a very wealthy man, and it's, it. and it's sad because there, I mean, again, there's these doctors, you know, they've taken on all this debt going to medical school, learning a bunch of BS, and they've worked themselves to death, sleep deprived for years on end. And they want to support their families now. 
And so they get offered these positions that make really good money, or you can become a functional medicine doctor and have to work side jobs to make it work. Again, it, it's hard. It's what do they? I mean, I understand their predicament. I really do. Right. Well, and those monies are offered. If based I didn't on, have you, I mean, I'd probably be working in the ER again. You know, that's probably the be, least offensive position I think I could take right now. Even less offensive than me. Huh. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm just saying if you weren't in my life, I'd probably still be in the ER. If right. I had never met you. I'm talking about, I, just, I was doing a, a play on words. Okay. The, Sorry, um, I didn't pick up on that. It, it always amazes me, though, and we said earlier in the podcast, that positions are paid based on what they can generate, not on how difficult it is. Or how or their outcomes I mean, of their patients. I'm going to pick an oncologist. I'm talking about, you have a job. I, I heard one of them bragging. I, I rounded on 60 patients. In one day, what type of possible care can you have? They're just checking boxes. They're checking boxes, and guess what? They make a million dollars a year because they're selling fifty million dollars worth of oncology. Yeah, th those products they sell are worth a lot of money. You know, your orthopedic surgeons—they're great. I'm not, I'm not maligning them, but they make a lot of money because those joints, those those mechanisms, are, make a lot of money for the company. So, these pain management. What is pain management? It's nothing more than pushing injections. Pump injections and pharmaceuticals so it's making a lot of money so they pay a lot of money it's almost like hush money i, I it does sound that way doesn't it yes where <laughs> you know uh, an infectious disease person which is very difficult a lot of to know they're not the highest paid no and family medicine doctors get paid deadly but yet i mean they're managing all kinds of stuff we we see you know we got family medicine doctors that deliver babies and see you until you're dead. You mm -hmm. know, we cover the whole lifespan and yet they're just, they take, and those should be the ones that we really start paying the most because we could, well, if they were functional medicine trained, they could prevent so many, um, the escalation of needing all these specialists. Well, you, you, you were, you were like outsourced that. because yes, we were out. you were, you brought in foreign doctors and you brought in nurse practitioners and PAs to, and a lot of your prescriptions can be outsourced to the specialist. So, okay, we don't need to worry about that. Because they turned it into a checkbox medicine. Right. One so, size fits all, check the box, here's your pill. Anybody can do that. Believe me, if it was dependent on family medicine to prescribe, you guys would be high paid still. But they've come out with and runs. The specialist can prescribe. Mm -hmm. The nurse, nurse practitioner can. Yeah, and we're just kind of overseeing them Yeah, now. so now you... Now, admin roles. And it just, each year it gets eroded more and more and yep. becomes less quality. And it's going to it's gonna start happening to other specialties as well, too. I mean, they've invaded all the... And I don't mean to call it an invasion. I mean, nurse practitioners and PAs certainly play vital ro roles, okay? I've, I've worked with... Their, they work for me. I've worked with them. There's some great ones out there. Um, but... It's just kind of how they're being used in the system um, to displace physicians. And I think that's been intentional, you know, kind of dumbing down the healthcare now. Yep. I'm not sure that it was ever smart, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we always want to leave things positive. The positive are, we thing, are we already done? We are pretty much okay. done. The positive things is you are in control with self-care. Things you need to push for, this is with your Congress people and but you need, we need pricing transparency. Like they're going to do anything. Well, if you do, you get a few of them that are good, you push them. But pricing transparency is one thing that is very important to, to change this paradigm. Because medical costs are not real. They're, they're artificially inflated. We use the example of the vitamin D lab often where it was $35 versus $1,000. Right. It's just artificial. These outrageous ER bills that people get, it's because one out of 10 are paying and the other nine are not, so they kind of amortize. I, there's no lobby for functional medicine. No, okay? but, but there, can, are, there's lobbies for the the hospital association and they're all they're companies. screaming the last. But these people still have to be elected. So if an informed electorate can still but make a change, but who do they work for? Really? I know. Well, then vote oh. them out and go again. This, this is only again. This is the We're system. Vote out another one. Put one back in. Who's still going to be having the same masters? All right. Well, I'm just so jaded need, at this point. Let's just blow them up then. <laughs> So that's really, don't say, don't say that. No, I'm just saying, because if, if, if this is the only mechanism we you're talking about, we have to work within the system. Well, this is the system we have. We ha we have a republic. This is how we vote. Well, I would like to get to a place where we just don't need them. And that comes from you, self-care, right? Right. But the two, if we can push for pricing transparency, yes, which is, that'd be helped. That, that, but that's going to occur from what i That seems to be going. And, and also 
more nimble insurance offerings, which even though we were promised... Boy, that would really be a great one. Yeah, we were promised catastrophic plans, that really but they're not because it's only, it's only for one year and they can exclude you the next. So that's why I always push the health, the Christian health ministries, the Samaritan Health, MediShare, and Christian Health Ministries, because they have enough offerings that if you'll allocate your own dollars and you, and you find places that have pricing transparency, like for surgeries or this, then you can kind of piecework this stuff together. You work with a functional medicine health coach, you start getting your, your, your self-care on where you're doing everything right. Now you've made some changes and you didn't have to use your Congress first. You know, we did, like I said, pricing transparency and a few more insurance offerings is really all we need because the rest of it comes up to us, ourselves, self-care. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do know some, we have, um, you know, a friend and a patient who's a state rep down the road from us. Mm-hmm. She's in healthcare. She's a great person. I know that she would be all, she's all about functional medicine. Getting everybody else on board is another thing. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the most obvious things, like right yeah, now. Rockefeller was our governor here. One of them, yeah. Come on. They always choose the backward states because they're easier to get elected. <laughs> no, hey, we're not a backward state. In a good way. We're I'm not just saying, backwards. We're a small state, so it's easier to get. A senator has the same power no matter where they're from. So to be elected in a small state is easier than, say, a California or a New York. So they, the Rockefellers go out, and they. that's why there's been one in West Virginia and in they're Arkansas. Everywhere. All right. Well, okay. I, I, I don't want this to be negative. I mean, there's. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. What a, we just got through bashing the system, and you don't want to be negative. I know. Well, I'm on the jaded because right now, uh, Congressman Massey is trying to pass the Prime Act, which is a. Anyone with any sense would push this through as quickly as possible. Basically, it's saying right now there's there's a beef shortage because there's not enough slaughterhouses to slaughter the the pigs and cows that are coming out. That's because there's four companies that control 85% of the market and it has to go through these elaborate that's, USDA inspections. And, and by these, these are Chinese and Brazilian companies scary. that own it. We, foreign countries, foreign companies own our meat supply. And yet a simple regulation would be there's, there's three slaughterhouses within 20 miles of here that I could take my cows to and I could sell direct to other people, but it's not allowed because it's not a USDA inspected facility. Yet these people butcher thousands of animals a year and people consume them with no problems. Mm-hmm. It's just a, it's just bureaucracy. And that's what the Prime Act is trying to say that within your state, that if you can take your animal to a local process, a custom processing, that you can sell within that state the same as you could as a USDA inspected animal. That will get rid of these monopolies on the food supply. It, it's just languishing. No one's, there's no one sponsoring it. Massey has himself and a few others sponsoring it, but it will be interesting to see if it goes through. This is something that's so glaring. We have a shortage of meat. It's controlled by foreign companies. Here's, a, here's a solution. It's a no-brainer issue. Like, oh, yes, let's do this. So I'll let, because no. they don't work for us, Paul. No, they don't. None of them. Okay, so maybe some of them. But most of them do not work for us. And so you, you look at something so clear like that that would be a slam dunk. You can understand why the medicine is so complicated. Oh. And that's why you have to take control of take yourself. Take control of your health. You are responsible for your health health don't let others take that responsibility because it's not going to go well for you okay Okay? and so i I will do another episode on doing the same thing for self-care but for your food supply because you got to work within the system some but you have to get out of it because it's it's not here to make us healthy so i think our next ones are going to be on weight loss but we never want to promise because we like thinking about what we're doing sometimes we we get an idea pop into our head and we're just like oh yeah we got to do this one got to run with this one now and I really wanted to attack, attack the um, the brainwashing that occurs in medical school because I just I, I got I'm just so sick of everybody thinking these people are health experts. Well, they come to be. They come I mean, to they be, know a lot about the human body. Don't get me wrong, but but they're not going to most times they're not going to solve the problem. And they're coming. People are coming to you to doctors to be solved. You know, for a problem to be solved, they should know that it's like taking. I have physicians as patients too, and now they're becoming big, very big believers. And what and what functional medicine is? Yeah, so different. there's hope, you know, but it's going to take a while. It's like taking your car to someone who's has some knowledge, but not really enough to to really fix your car. But they'll do some things to it because they they learn some parts of it. Right. That's unfortunately what medicine is. That's sad. It is sad, and it's, it's the only science that's like that. I'm telling you. I'm almost, sometimes I'm embarrassed to even have MD after my name. I'm like, no, you should still be proud of it. It was, it was hard what you it, went through. It's like, oh, I'm, but I, I want to say. 
I'm a physician, but I'm not one of those physicians. I'm a functional medicine physician. And I always feel like I have to clarify every time they're like, oh, you're a doctor. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not one of those doctors. That's, well, that's, that's me. That's basically the same way with, when, as a farmer. I said, I'm, I'm not a cattle farmer. I'm a, I'm a grass farmer because right. I wanted people to know that I'm not part of that big ag conventional system that I do things differently. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I get it. But that's enough. <laughs> there is hope. Again, because we control our own destiny with self-care, this is and all. Don't, don't let anybody else tell you otherwise either. Yeah. All right. You, you have most of the control over what happens in your life. So we'll kind of break down some of these tangible things over the next few months. The exercise, oh, the sleep. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, you'll get it from us. If you can't afford health coaching, then just keep watching these. Keep you can, listening you, to you, us. Um, we're going to get into the more of the nuts and bolts of actual um, disease states, what you can do about them. Oh, because everyone wants to be identified as their disease. Yeah. We, Unfortunately, that's... We I'm, have to talk I'm a thyroid patient. specific a, disease states to get our points across and to get people to click on it. If we'll, we we got to do what we got to do, right? Well, that's why we're going to do weight loss because that gets everyone's attention. Yeah, but you'll learn a lot during those epi those um, episodes. Because weight loss is a symptom, folks. It's a symptom. It's not a diagnosis. It's a symptom of a dysfunctional immune system. That makes you very susceptible to COVID. Yes, <laughs> and 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 it, you need to take it as a. It needs to set off alarms for you if you're dealing with weight issues. Don't take that lightly. You, that needs to be corrected. Because okay? we're rolling out the fear of death diet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if that gets your attention to you know to lose weight. Death, death is a motivator. It sure is. It seems to be, huh? All right. We will see you next week. We appreciate you. And what's your what's your little favorite saying? Love, Love many, me. trust few, and paddle your own canoe, especially when it comes to your health. Absolutely. We'll see you soon, guys. Bye bye. I don't take nothing. That a doctor don't prescribe. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't smoke no bud, man. I don't do no drugs, man. It angers up that blood, man. So I don't do no drugs. I just take pack sales, Xanax, Olap, Olmac, Morphine, Valtrex, Flow.